Hi everyone, this lesson is on the side effects of amiodarone use. So we're going to talk about some of the main side effects of amiodarone, including some of the most common side effects that many aren't aware of. Before we talk about the side effects though, we're going to talk about some technical information on amiodarone and how it works. So amiodarone is a class 3 antiarrhythmic medication. It's used primarily to treat ventricular arrhythmias, and it acts in the heart as a potassium channel blocker. It affects potassium signaling within the heart. And by doing this, it decreases both sinus and AV node function. So if we were to look quickly at the heart, the sinoatrial node or the SA node is going to be affected, and also the atrioventricular node will also be affected as well. This is all going to lead to a slow or reduced heart rate. And more specifically, it's going to prolong action potentials and repolarization. Now, because of the way it acts, it can cause mild and or severe side effects. And in fact, amiodarone can cause a lot of side effects in individuals. Up to half of individuals will have side effects, and some quite severe, especially with prolonged use. So amiodarone is going to be a medication that causes a lot of side effects. So what are some of the side effects of amiodarone use? We're going to talk about some that are more easily thought about because of their effects on the heart. Those are going to be the first ones we're going to talk about here. So these include bradycardia, which is a low heart rate, less than 60 beats per minute. You can imagine because it's suppressing or changing how the electrodynamics work in the heart, slowing the action potential and repolarization. It's going to reduce heart rate so we can get a lower heart rate. This is going to occur in roughly three to 5% of patients. We can also see heart block occurring in patients as well. So there's multiple types of effects in the heart. We can get sinus node dysfunction and AV blocks. So we can get first degree, second degree, and even third degree blocks. So all these can occur in amiodarone use, and this can occur in up to 5% of patients. Hypotension or a low blood pressure can also occur with amiodarone use. So this is going to be defined as less than 90 over 60 millimeters of mercury pressure. And this can occur in a larger number of patients, up to 15 to 20% of patients can be affected by hypotension. So this can affect quite a few patients and can cause some side effects we'll discuss a little bit later on. We can also see congestive heart failure in a very small subset of patients on amiodarone as well. So rarely it may elicit, so it may trigger a congestive heart failure in some patients or can exacerbate an underlying congestive heart failure. It's going to occur in less than 3% of patients, and we can get signs and symptoms of congestive heart failure. If it's right-sided heart failure, you can see it in peripheral edema, for instance, so we can see it in fluid in the legs. We can also see it with ascites, with even liver failure. If it's left-sided heart failure, we can get other symptoms like more respiratory symptoms, including dyspnea on exertion or shortness of breath on exertion, and proxismal nocturnal dyspnea, which is where patients are suddenly woken up in the middle of the night gasping for air. So some of those are symptoms of congestive heart failure. Some other patients, another subset of patients, can have an increased risk of torsad to point. So torsad to point means twisting of the points, and it's going to be found on ECG. It's a type of ventricular tachycardium. This is actually one of the most common, if not the most common, drug-induced torsad to point, and it's a life-threatening condition. We can also see dizziness occurring in patients taking amiodarone. This is or may be related to hypotension, that low blood pressure we talked about before, and that case could be syncope, which is a lightheadedness, and in some cases, if severe enough, patients could faint. This can occur in a quite a large variable percentage of patients, depending on the study. Anywhere from as low as 3% of patients up to 40% can be affected with dizziness. Headaches can also occur as well in patients taking amiodarone. It's going to be a nonspecific headache maybe a tension-like headache with a sort of vice-like band around the head. So it'd be bilateral headache on both sides of the head. And again, this can have a variable effect depending on the study. As low as 3% of patients may be affected, but as many as 40% of patients may be affected. Malaise can also be another side effect. So malaise is just a general feeling of being unwell. People just generally don't feel well. They kind of feel sick. And again, this can occur in 3 to 40% of patients. Fatigue is also another possible side effect of amiodarone use. This is having less energy than usual. It can be related to the hypotension, the low heart rate. All of these can affect patients and make them feel quite drained and tired. 
And again, 3 to 40% of patients, again, depending on the study, can be affected by this particular side effect. Other patients can have what we call photosensitivity. And so photosensitivity is a sensitivity to light. Anywhere from as little as 10% of patients up to 75% of patients may be affected to some degree at least by photosensitivity. So this can be a quite common side effect. So it could be very mild photosensitivity in some cases or more severe. We can also see corneal deposits. Now this is going to be a very important one. And this is where we get yellow, brown, or gray deposits in the cornea. So you can literally see something like this if you were to look at the eye in a slit lamp exam. This is actually going to be the most common issue long term. Up to 90% of patients may be susceptible to this, especially with long term use. And it's usually going to be asymptomatic. You might not even know you have it. It's where amiodarone literally gets into the cornea and deposits there. So you can get something that kind of looks like this under a slit lamp. Other patients can have optic neuritis, which is an inflammation of the optic nerve. This occurs in about 1% of patients and can cause visual issues. So this can lead to a reduction in vision, visual disturbances or changes, and vision loss in some cases. It can be unilateral or bilateral. And we can also see issues with the thyroid gland in patients taking amiodarone as well. These include hypothyroidism, which is a low thyroid functioning where they have low thyroid hormone levels. This can occur in up to 20% of patients. And you're going to get signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, including feeling cold, weight gain, feeling very fatigued. This is also another reason why patients can feel fatigued. And a lot of other findings as well. If you want more information, please check out my full lesson on the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism. And other patients can get hyperthyroidism or high thyroid functioning. So amiodarone, the backbone of the molecule of amiodarone is similar in some way to thyroid hormones. This is why it can cause issues with thyroid functioning. So in some patients, they can have hyperthyroidism or high thyroid functioning where they can have high levels of thyroid hormone. Approximately 3 to 10% of patients can be affected with hyperthyroidism. And with hyperthyroidism, we can see signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism, including feeling too hot, heat intolerance, having weight loss, having increased bowel movements, and sweating and tremors and other signs and symptoms. If you want more information on hyperthyroidism, please check my lessons on that topic as well. We can also see abnormal gait in some patients. So abnormal gait is going to be where patients are not as steady in walking as well as they should. They can feel unsteady. They may not walk straight in a straight line. And they can have involuntary movements as well. And Anywhere from as little as 3% up to 40% of patients can be affected with an abnormal gait. And impaired memory is also another side effect of amiodarone use as well. It's often going to be found in things like reduced short-term memory. So your working memory may be affected. You're not able to hold information in your mind in that particular moment to use or manipulate. You may also have confusion and general cognitive impairment, especially with long-term use. As little as 3% may be affected or as many as 40% may be affected. Again, according to the study, depending on the study, depending on the dosing and how long patients have been using amiodarone. Sleep disturbances can also be something that can be found in amiodarone patients. This can often be related to the thyroid function changes we talked about before. So if patients are having hyperthyroidism at high thyroid function, they can feel very jittery. They may have issues with falling asleep. So insomnia, so having issues with falling asleep, staying asleep, or early morning awakening can all occur. And then other patients can have vivid dreams or nightmares as well. And this can be anywhere from 3 to 40% as well. Other neurologic disturbances include the following. Paresthesias, numbness and tingling sensations, and tremors can also occur as well. And this can be related to hyperthyroidism. Now, some other important side effects that are more linked to amiodarone use include pulmonary fibrosis. So pulmonary fibrosis is essentially a scarring of the lung parenchyma, the tissue of the lung that's the functional tissue. And we can get signs and symptoms of pulmonary fibrosis. These include dyspnea, shortness of breath, dry cough, severe fatigue, and others as well. And we can also see hepatic toxicity in patients taking amiodarone as well. So it can be common to see increases in AST and ALT levels in patients on amiodarone. And up to 20% of patients may be affected with hepatic toxicity, but less than 3% of patients will have severe hepatic damage to the point where they may have cirrhosis of the liver. 
So again, this can be a very problematic medication for a lot of patients, and a lot of patients are going to cease taking it because of a lot of these side effects. Some other side effects that can occur include photodermatitis. So this is an inflammation of the skin due to sun exposure. So patients on amiodarone can be more sensitive to the sun, so they can get sort of something like this that can occur. And they can also get skin deposits as well that generally occur on sun-exposed skin. And then finally, some gastrointestinal symptoms that can occur with amiodarone use include constipation. So constipation is going to be, if we were to look at the bristle stool chart, type 4 stool is a normal stool, and type 1, 2, and 3 would be considered constipation. So it's where there's less fluid in the stool, so we get shapes kind of like this. And more specifically, constipation is going to be a decrease in frequency and or increase in consistency of stool. And up to a third of patients can be affected with constipation. And then anorexia, or a loss of appetite, can also occur in some patients with amiodarone. Up to a third of patients are affected with anorexia, or loss of appetite. Please check out my other lessons on side effects of other important medications, including metformin and statins. Also, please consider joining as member for members-only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.